For measuring high average power beams, you need to use a high average power sensor, right? Let's explain that question. As laser power continues to enter the sensor, the resulting heat has to get removed at least as fast as it keeps coming in, otherwise the sensor can overheat and fail. While sensors for measuring a few watts can use conduction, higher power sensors typically use fan or water cooling. Sensors designed for working at multi-kilowatt levels tend to be large and heavy. That's just part of how they manage to dissipate heat at such high rates. And it's unavoidable, right? Well, partly right. There are ways to get away with using lower power sensors to measure higher power beams. The main idea is that we can go above the average power limit for a short time, as long as the overall longer term average power is still within the limit so that the sensor won't heat up to the point of damage. Also, of course, the sensor itself needs to have a suitable scale and needs to have been tested and its specifications verified for such powers. Here are three practical solutions. One, Ophir has for many years had a few sensors that are designed for intermittent use. Their names include two numbers, like our L5150A, which means it can measure 50 watts continuously, and up to 150 watts for a brief exposure. Two, keeping in mind that power is energy over time and that it's the total energy absorbed over time that causes a sensor to heat up, it should be possible to expose a sensor to too high power for only a very short time and have the sensor survive the experience since it won't have managed to absorb enough total energy to actually overheat. It can't measure power directly this way since a short exposure might need to be on the order of a fraction of a second, and a thermal sensor's response time is itself a few seconds. However, a thermal sensor in energy mode can treat that short exposure as if it were just one single shot pulse, and measure the energy of that pulse. Divide the energy by the known pulse width, and that gives the power during the pulse. For example, the moderate power L4150A has a 4 kilojoule energy scale, as do several other such sensors. To measure power of an 8 kilowatt beam, we can fire the laser for half a second with the sensor in energy mode, and we'll measure 4 kilojoules of energy in the pulse. Divide that by half a second, and that gives the 8 kilowatts beam power. Of course, we then need to wait for the sensor to cool back down before repeating, but in many applications, that's perfectly okay. Three. If you have the Ophir star bright meter, you can do what we just described automatically with any power sensor using star bright's pulsed power function. That's demonstrated in one of the star bright video segments, which you can see using the link below. Contact Ophir directly or via your local Ophir representative to see how we can help you with your application.